Namaskar India. Good afternoon. Good evening to all my friends who are joining us from across the world. I'm Sangeeta Singh, your host and moderator. And well, on behalf of Asia One and URS International Media House, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to our web talk series. Well, I must say a big thank you to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, all our dear viewers and followers, because it is each one of you week after week that you've joined us and which is how today we complete 15th episode of our web talk series. So yes, I'm going to clap out loud for all our amazing personalities, our leaders who've enriched our series with so much of knowledge. Yes, I'm sure that each one of you has simply enjoyed the exhilarating of, you know, array of thoughts that we presented to you and of course some great institutional work of, uh, you know, great discussion here. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, today again, we are back with a very, very interesting topic, evolving from good to great, turning adversity into opportunity. Yes, I'm going to talk a little more about that. But before that, I always, always feel proud to share with you about our television series, Greatest Brands and Leaders, which all of you know, we've started telecasting on CNBC TV 18 which again is a weekly series for us. So right here, as you can see it on my screen. And we're also very proud to share with you, friends, that yes, we've also, you know, extended this all and expanded to Bangladesh. And we've actually, actually taken the series on News 24. Again, it is going to be a weekly television series for us. And then we've collaborated with ZTV, just to let you know, in Middle East and entire North Africa. So now our television series actually finds its presence in India on CNBC TV 18, Bangladesh on News 24, and Middle East and North Africa, you can see us on ZTV. And just to let you know that what this entire, you know, great uh, series is all about, it actually brings across some amazing, amazing, success stories of greatest brands and leaders. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be leaving you with a promo of CNBC TV 18 television series. Let's have the promo, please. Greatness is defined by the leaders who wield it. A brand is a culmination of groundbreaking ideas and impeccable execution. URS Asia One presents Greatest Brands and Leaders 2019-20. At these times... Yes, so that is a proud moment for all of us. And with that, let's come back to our today's very, very wisely, very, very aptly chosen topic, talking about evolving from good to great. I guess this is what our state of mind is, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever state of mind we are in, we always aspire to be better. If we are good, of course, we are looking at becoming great and also turning adversity into opportunity. I was just having a talk before I actually started with this wonderful webinar, the series with my amazing speakers who are there here with me today, that yes, none of us are actually stranger, strangers to challenges or to any kind of adversities. And COVID-19, oh my God, this is, I think, one adversity, one challenge, wherein the entire, entire world is dealing with it together. So ladies and gentlemen, today we have some extraordinary personalities and leaders, like I said, who actually, through their own experiences, through their thoughts, will somewhere navigate us through hardships of COVID-19, you know, the kind of impact that it has had on our personal and professional lives. They will somewhere guide us, enlighten us on their own journey, on their own, you know, powers, that how they have dealt with their adversities and how they actually have that uncanny ability to transform every challenge into an opportunity. Yes, they are here to show us that how we can actually be a little more awakened 
and pursue our opportunities no matter what the circumstances are no matter what the challenges are well for me about dealing with my adversities for me one thing that i have really really learned in my experiences of life that acceptance of you know whatever you are going through at this point in time is the most important thing so with that let me introduce very very quickly to all our amazing speakers today on board on web talks episode 15 let me start by the very gorgeous miss madhu ji who is here with us our indian film actress we simply have loved her and we have cherished her on and off screen every single time so madhu ji a quick hello to you uh, i want you to unmute yourself and just say a big hello to your you know to your fans out there hi sangeeta thank you for having me once again on your prestigious platform and uh, most importantly i feel so proud to be a part of all the other members who are so accomplished and uh, so experienced so to be a part of this panel on your uh, on your platform yet again it is really indeed a very proud privilege moment for me uh, because uh, a i say that again and again not because i run an organization or a business uh, uh you know like a project or anything it's just on an individual capacity that i experience life uh, uh doing business or working as an actor and the strikes and the struggle and you have put me on a platform with people who are running a business so i'm sure that is a little bit different but yet to be given that platform to be able to share that emotion and thought uh which can probably resonate with everyone so i do appreciate and really really proud and privileged feel very honored to be here so thank you so much sangeeta for having me here thank you madhu ji thank you like always you you know you kind of begin the webinar with so much of energy you're simply vivacious and i think that's your true personality with thank that you. let me bring in mr raj malela uh, ladies and gentlemen he's the managing director to satra group a very warm and hearty welcome on web talk sir how are you doing today yeah good afternoon sangeeta and then the fellow panelists as well as the participants it's my privilege to be here addressing the at least the uh, gathering and as well as be part of this informative the webinar in fact i would like to congratulate the asia one for initiating these web seminars or webinars on variety of topics i have been actually closely following and even i attended a couple of your webinars they are quite informative and there is actually a lot of information that we can take back and then use it in our daily life so i am i am sure i am looking forward for the other panelists to to share their experiences so that even we can take back some of those measures into our processes thank you thank you mr rajmala thank you so much for you know reiterating your faith into this wonderful knowledge series we really looking forward for our leaders to associate with us on this it is going to be a great thing and with that let me bring on our next leader on board ladies and gentlemen today we have mr neeraj kumar gupta he is the managing director for nambi vacations private limited a very warm and hearty welcome on the webinar sir how are you doing i am doing fine thank you so much sangeeta and thank you so much asia one media for taking this initiative this crisis something no one has any unique solution i ha might have something in my mind as some other people have their own strategy their own experience i think this is the best platform where we can not only share our experience but also learn from other people and thanks to you for taking this initiative thank you sir thank you each one of your faith each one of your trust for joining us associating with us and uh, more than anything you know sparing your time with us and your knowledge with us really really means a lot to the asia and family with that ladies and gentlemen yes we have mr shri hari pathak he is the managing director to pathak group india a very warm and hearty welcome sir thank you sangeeta for the great introdu introduction uh, yes uh, i thank the asia one magazine for uh, bringing me on the panel and uh, express our ideas and views and sharing the platform with other panelists uh, asia one is doing a great job with last 15 episodes uh, we have been following it and uh, all the episodes have some takeaways from it and some information some learning which is uh, required in this pandemic times and once again i congratulate the entire team of asia one and 
URS Media to putting this platform together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So, well, viewers, our wonderful friends, you are seeing that how super energized and supercharged are all our wonderful panelists here. So with that, let me dwell a little more into Madhuji's life and get her perspective on how actually it is all about evolving from good to great and, of course, turning adversities into opportunities. So, Madhuji, I want you to unmute yourself in my first question. Well, I have always been saying that you're brimming with positivity and joy and happiness. You simply are somebody who's so infectious in her entire demeanor. But I'm sure you've had your set of struggles, your set of adversities, A, from COVID perspective, of course, and in a larger perspective about your life, your career. Now, how have you learned to turn every, every challenge into an opportunity for yourself? Okay, um, so many questions. It is not just one question. Uh, so let me just get my thoughts in, uh, in order. Firstly, I truly believe that our life is the meaning that we attach to our life. Everything in our life is the meaning that we ascribe to it. So um, even when you talk about what is good and not good is how you think about it. And then uh, your emotions follow your thoughts. Hence, you change your thought, your emotions change and your life changes. We've heard this many times but I truly practice it and hence I experience my life in that regard. At every point in my life, I see myself as a very successful person, very blessed person. Um, I, wherever I go, that is a feeling I carry with me. Now, why do I do that? Because only I know where I started from and what, were my, what was my, um, uh, you know, the things that stopped me, what was my, um, the problems that I had to face. And where I started my journey, at what point, where was I? And then where did I go? Where am I today? I am an extremely successful person. But do I want you to describe me as a success? No, I attach meaning to my life. I know my struggles. I sleep with myself. I wake up with myself. How many days in a month or how many hours in a day am I happy? How much energy do I have in my health? to engage in my activities, into my relationships, how, how competent I am. And so I know how successful I am. But if I allow another person to judge me, a magazine to judge me, an award function to judge me, they may judge me, uh, they may compare me to Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. They may compare me to Ms. Hema Malini. But, and then rate me in, in their order of success. And if I have to believe you, then I may think that I have done nothing in my life. I'm a total failure. But no, only I know how successful I am. It's like the same example that I would like to say. Everybody today, when they are talking about the magical probability or possibility of a human life, which is definitely possible, anybody can do anything. And because there's one man who can swim um, hours and miles, you know that another human being can. But whether you are that human being or not, we don't know. So therefore, you cannot compare yourself to Michael Phelps and compare, say that you are not a successful swimmer. You have to not compare. You have that as a benchmark because one human being has done something. You know other human beings can do. You can have high goals. But to compare in yourself that, oh, he swam the lake or he swam the, uh, the channel and I cannot. So I am not a good swimmer is not the way to go about life because that is the meaning you give and that is the emotion that will follow. Today, everybody says a chaiwala from Gujarat can become the prime minister of India. Now, every chaiwala, if he says that I want to be a prime minister of India, otherwise I'm a good for nothing, then I think everybody is good for nothing. But a chaiwala can definitely aim to have a bigger stall. If he has started from a small town in Gujarat, he can come to the main city of Gujarat. He can have a bigger restaurant in a city like Mumbai. Maybe he can aim to have a hotel. Maybe he can aim to have a lovely place, uh, open a restaurant in New York. And that is a progressive, incremental, incremental progression, which is what I call is in your hands and is your success. So you know how much. And that other thing that magically uh, you become a prime minister or you become an Oscar awardee, that is the unknown element. We are all today given two parts to life. One is the known and one is the unknown. And we have to accept, Sangeeta, in the opening speech, you said the greatest success comes from accepting what has been given to you and the adaptability. And that is 50% of your life. But if you say, if you give your whole life to that uh, possibility, that whatever happens, happens, 
then that is an escapism you are escaping you don't have the courage to uh, do things in life you don't have the courage to face life and you said jo bhi hoga jaise hoga that is not what i'm saying what i'm saying is to understand that there are two elements to every life one is the unknown element you don't know when grace is going to come to you you don't know uh, how your destiny or nature is going to pan out for you you don't know your next minute but at the same time other 50% of your life you know you wake up today i only wanted to be an actor i did, never felt that i'm going to be a ceo or an engineer or a doctor or a carpenter so there is something that comes from your soul that you want to do and that you can do every day you can hone yourself you can hone your skills you can become a better dancer you can become a better director and you can try for the opportunities there are step by step progression you get a small part today you get a bigger part today you get a bigger part and life unfolds and that is your success and that is in your hands to know what your intentions are to know how to decide and to make the choices and you work for it and we all have done that and then you because the unknown is working in your favor the greatest thing i have learned in my life to look every day for those three things or five things in your every day that you can be grateful for and once you train your mind to be grateful for something then you value every small thing even a friend who calls you in the moment of your despair when you're lonely and a phone call comes and they chat with you and you say thank god for that phone call that teaches you value of humanity of love of being togetherness every small things become big the focus moves from big to small i have moved my focus from big to small i work on every small thing every day every morning i wake up and say today i want to be happy today i want to receive love today i want to give love today i want to practice my skill so i can be 1% or 0.01% better than what i was yesterday at what i do and that makes me feel extremely in control of life it keeps me focused i have hope i have ambition i have um, goals i want more and that gives me a very op optimistic futuristic hope for tomorrow it takes me in a very hopeful way into tomorrow but my actual existence and my joy and my happiness comes that today i am very happy and i'm so grateful while half the world is burning in pain i'm not being uh, insensitive or i am not desensitized to what is happening keeping the covid in 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 mind today either uh, family members are feeling sick or they've lost somebody dear and it is a moment of grief or if not that they've lost income and they're thinking how am i going to pay my monthly bill so i know the half the world is burning today and i pray for them and whatever i can do to help another human being somewhere in whatever level again i always say don't focus on the big because when you focus on the big it paralyzes you you say ma hospital to nahi ban sakta main 10000 rupees donate nahi kar sakta main 10 lakhs donate nahi kar sakta and then you do nothing the point is not how big you can do or you can participate it is how small you can do and make a big difference in someone's life so i bring back the focus to small habits small behavior and most importantly like my favorite uh, new book that i've read is robin sharma a very great motivational uh, speaker and he's written a book called 5 am club in that he talks about the four aspects to human success one is the attitude uh one is the heart attitude so attitude is your strength to face life to wake up every morning and say i'm going to work hard heart attitude is when you um you know forgive people and when you are able to hold your positivity and hopefulness and joy and move into tomorrow because without that it is unable you are if your if your heart weighs you down you cannot move forward and the third is the health set health is very important you need to look after your health any which way we don't know a, a truck can hit you and it can paralyze you so these are these unknown things that can happen to you but while those unknown things are not happening you know the known things you can do like sleep eat exercise don't over indulge in those pleasurable things which are act actually toxins to you if you practice those things and keep your energy at good well good health and uh, so that is very important but the fourth and the final most he says is the soul set and to me that soul set i put above everything 
and that is when you bow down to the unknown to the god or to nature or to universe whatever in your language you call the unknown power you join your hands and say everything that is is perfect now i'm going to work around that perfect and i'm going to make good of what is given to me when you are able to make good of what is given to you and you are happy most of the times that is a great life well lived madhu ji oh my god trust me i am speechless at this point in time with the passion that you speak and yes thank you for leaving us with these four great mantras that you have been inspired yes as she very rightly said the attitude the happyitude your health of course not really worrying about the unknown but whatever is in your control whatever you think is in your ability learn to respond to it positively optimistically and and so excuse me not to say that i don't have my disappointments my despair my depression not to say that i don't have those things but every time i go through that when i sit in my mandir and i say oh my god my hands and my legs are perfect my my xyz is perfect my children are perfect my so you know when i start counting the things that are so good in my life somehow the things that cause me pain they just fade away Absolutely. and this is not i'm talking from people who are you know we are all talking the same thing today but this i am truly talking from what i practice this i practice thank you indeed so rightly said make sure that you are counting on your blessings every time there's something bad happening to you because we always end up saying you know why me why it has to be me but we never say that when we are happy or we are feeling blessed so the acceptance of it is very important and then you learn to fight it out and stand strong thank you madhu ji thank you so much thank you so much like right they say you know god actually lies in those small things make sure that you are thankful you have that sense of gratitude and with that you know i can actually uh, feel raj ji completely in agreement with whatever is being said right now by madhu ji so you know raj ji from a now of course madhu ji has very well spoken from a personal and her professional perspective need to bring you into the picture you know being a businessman somewhere the challenges the hardships are something that are unavoidable they somewhere are a part and parcel integral part of our journey towards success whatever the measure of success would be for you or for me for a matter of fact so how do you think it is important for a leader to accept these challenges embrace it good or bad however they are and you know kind of uh, move on with your journey yeah just after uh, madhu ji's uh, speech uh, which is quite energetic uh, it is extremely difficult to match her energy <laughs> i must admit <laughs> i'm a good fan of her and uh, i will try to be as energetic as possible but definitely i'm sure i cannot match her energy uh, the uh, to me the challenges basically exist everywhere in the everyday life and it, it exists everywhere i don't think so there is any aspect of life which is without a challenge so my my uh, experience is we need to look at the perspective as well as the complexity of the challenge so in every situation the challenge will have a different perspective and a different complexity but i am a firm believer that opportunities do exist so we need to look beyond the challenges for the opportunities it is extremely extremely important for all of us and especially for the business fraternity wherein they carry a lot of risk both in terms of establishing as well as the continue to do the operations of the business so they have a they carry a lot of challenges as well as the risk so we need to understand the challenges as well as their consequences both may be from top down approach or bottom up approach in some situations the top down approach may be appropriate whereas in some situations the bottom up approach may be appropriate so both we need to look at how where the problem lies or what is the challenge and then what could be its consequences and those affected areas it may not be affecting the whole supply chain mechanism or the entire operations of your organizations but if covid is one of the very peculiar scenario but i am talking in general then i can get back to the covid in general the challenges may not affect the whole 
chain of the operations so we must identify the the areas affected and then try to prepare a contingency plan for those situations if we really want to be successful we re, we need to be innovative look beyond the challenge so we cannot actually sit and then always discuss about the challenge and then the its consequences hypothetically or oh, this may happen or that may happen rather we need to look more a psychology or a scientific analysis of the challenges this is the challenge i have and generally what i do is i look at the challenge and then try to break that into small pieces so have a small so a manageable components break that into manageable components but without losing the ultimate or the the overall what is the issue but then address one by one i i don't believe that addressing all the problems or the challenges are even if let it be one challenge together we cannot if we do that one it will be extremely difficult like madhu ji is saying that okay we need to look at part by part we cannot actually look at the whole thing how big you can do it but what what the small uh, uh, contribution that you can make so that's how in fact we look at the challenge into a kind of a number of pieces and then address each piece at a at a time like in cricket they say that if ball by ball or over by over rather than look at the 50 overs together and this is what my target is so they look at over by over or 10 overs or 15 overs so that's how in fact i have been practicing and then i see that the there there is there is reasonable success if we uh, perhaps adopt that kind of method maybe i am maybe i am uh, reasonably successful in that kind of approach so i my experience actually talks that we need to look at a piece by piece rather than a big uh, the big the or the challenge then what we need to do is we need to bring in the required changes we cannot be actually rigid so we need to bring in the changes into the processes what we are adopting according to the situations so at least to achieve the success every situation handle with care don't actually think that i am the superman <laughs> nothing can happen to me no you are a common man but perhaps you are a more a person who is who has taken additional responsibility as, as the are the risk compared to the individuals but you are a normal man wherein you really need to be cautious and as well as take precautions with the situations for example if covid is there i cannot say that i am i am actually a kind of a super cop or a superman nothing can happen to me and go out without a mask <laughs> or don't maintain the social distancing so we really need to be actually uh, quite quite uh, cautious as well as the take the precautions whatever are the precautions required even in the business so you do a kind of a risk assessment yes if i go this path then what is the risk and what are the risk mitigation measures and then try to adopt those risk mitigation measures as much as possible avoid the risk rather than invite the risk and then start repairing it or addressing it so a good or a intelligent businessman will see that okay i try to avoid my risk for in the first place in case if i cannot avoid risk then how i can mitigate the risk so those are the things that in fact we we adopt in our business and as far as the covid is concerned yes definitely there is a big challenge but one of the things which gives comfort to all of us is i am not alone in this battle everyone is with me <laughs> so i am not going to actually uh, uh, drown by myself right there are actually thousands and millions and the whole world is with me so that actually gives a lot of comfort to most of us saying that okay this battle is not only for me but for all of us so even in the covid initially people might have actually panicked including myself and then the organization as well but as the time progresses we are looking at what opportunities that we can look into this and then trying to innovate trying to actually innovate things a, a, how a particular task can be achieved under these extremely difficult and constrained situations and i must admit that the team i have to support the organization or the business so i think most of the credit my myself but mostly to my team in realizing the situation in realizing what we are going through and then supporting the whole organization that's all from me 
thank you. Thank you, Mr. Das. Thank you so much. And how rightly did you say that, yes, we need to be innovative. The sooner we adapt to these kind of challenges, the stronger we grow together. And as you said, uh, for somewhere, for some kind of satisfaction, we know that it is not only just you or me who's fighting this battle, but there is everybody in it. And I'm sure together we're going to sail through such tough times. And kudos to your team who's been your backbone together, each, you know, your entire team has been fighting the COVID crisis. Thank you. Let me bring in Mr. Neeraj Kumar Gupta into the conversation. Sir, could I request you to unmute yourself? So Neeraj ji, uh, you know, I would like to ask you, you know, Mr. Malela did make a mention about the COVID crisis. Generally, when we are into business, somewhere, of course, we have the foresight about the challenges, or the opportunities that lie ahead of us. To an extent, we kind of know, we are very sensitized to it, right? But when you have something as uncertain as COVID hit us, this lockdown that has extended far more than what we actually thought it would, it somewhere has also given us a lot of time to an extent. It has hampered our business, but there were a lot of things that we wanted to do probably when it comes to technology part of it. We've seen businesses actually accelerate into that particular so how have you utilized this particular time for your business? I mean, though it came as an adversity, how you kind of turned it around into an opportunity by reshaping, so reshaping your strategies and what have been your vital areas of focus to take you to a newer level, you know, from this whole pause that has come into our businesses and our lives. Yeah. So I am into travel industry and this, industry suffered the most of course there is impact in almost all the industry but this industry which will take the last it will be the last industry that will pick up after covid is over uh, there is a famous saying that this is our attitude not aptitude that will decide our attitude so in covid time rather than thinking oh i'm a genius person i plan a lot of strategy i can foresee a lot of things it's time what's happening as you mentioned that, first of all, we need to accept there is a crisis. As soon as we realized that the crisis is there, we started talking to all the stakeholders and our biggest stakeholder was our customers. Because the customer is your real boss who can fire you if he's not happy with your service. So we have started talking to our stakeholder. We started to jotting down all the points taking prediction when COVID may over, when people will start traveling. And of course, no one knows the exact answer when this COVID is over, when the people will start traveling. But we have received so many tools and techniques that we can start working. For example, what will happen post-COVID? That's more important. Of course, when COVID is over, no one knows. But when post-COVID, people will have different paradigm shift in travel industry. Till now, people were traveling to make their checklist. Okay, I've been to Paris, I've been to Germany, I've been to this place. But now, people will go for their wealth. There will be totally paradigm And that's the main point where our we have started making our strategy we have planned so many things for example wellness is the biggest industry that will take place once covid is over second people used to travel but now people will prefer to holiday they will prefer to stick at one place spend quality time with their family members so what we are going to do we have planned so many activities when the people will come to our resorts we will start making their experience better. People are having stress. Even if someone has billions of money, still many people suffered losses. So everyone is at loss. So they have that mental pressure. How can I recover once COVID is over? Everyone has that dilemma. Someone has lost more money. Someone has lost lesser money. So we have planned some activities in such a way that there will be less stress. So we will be running some stress booster program where uh, we will be planning some yoga retreat, we will be planning some Ayurvedic therapy, we are planning some massage therapy so that person can be, uh, can be, can reduce some of the stress. This is again a famous saying that success is not final and failure is not fatal. 
this is our courage to conquer that really counts so there are so many people who know that yes there is very very big failure many of us could not recognize the risk there's so much big is also uh, uh, such a big risk is coming but yes rather than worrying my god we are failure we have lost so many money we have lost so many business rather than thinking that way who oh, what of course needs are coming so many people will start now traveling so there are so many people who are working from home there will be monotonous city in their life now they will prefer to go on traveling they will prefer to go on holiday there were a lot of events that were happening in cities for example wedding now people may prefer to go for destination wedding so a lot of opportunities coming we changed all our plan earlier we were focusing on traveling part people will come do check in sites in next day you check out new customer will come but now we have changed our strategy what we are planning when the customer will come how can we package his experience so that he will stay there for at least four five days go back and come back again after five six months not only come back he will also bring lot of many other customers so in terms of strategy we jot down each and every point what our customers were suggesting we try to make all the changes whatever we think that post covid the scenario will be changed in fact there will be time when the travel industry will see at least 5x growth within 3 years time that is going to happen so we have scaled up our resources we will talk to our investors yes you may need some money not because we are running in losses but because a very big opportunity is coming into our way and we would like to trap that opportunity thank so you in, in case i i like yeah i would like to summarize that every crisis will be an opportunity this is up to us whether we we'll start getting regretting or thinking oh i am the victim god is not very generous to me or start thinking yes god has since i have that skill god has given this given me this opportunity it's time to boom once covid is over our industry will be at the top that's a attitude we need to have thank you neeraj ji that's absolutely a very optimistic attitude as you very rightly said that the travel industry has been hit really hard with covid-19 but uh, you totally agree uh, you know you're in agreement with mr raj malella where he spoke about innovation and which is why you've already started re-strategizing uh, there was a different way you would deal with your business and today you've taken an all new approach so i guess yes you may have to adapt when we say the new normal things will not go back to the old normal we know that things are bad for us but then they're never going to be it's very impermanent like everything else and we're going to and we will see the travel industry also grow much exponentially it's all about giving a better experience thank you thank you neeraj ji thank you let me bring in mr shri hari patra thank you sir thank you so much for listening to us and thank you for waiting uh, but it's wonderful to speak to you now uh, i already have questions for you there are people because yes real estate also is you know one of the hardest hit sector because with the migrant labor is going away i'm sure there are a lot of challenges in business that you have faced during the covid you know how have you turned it around into a great opportunity for yourself for your team members and what has been your core strategy to deal with this entire pandemic thanks sangeeta for the question uh this covid has taught us a lot of things uh, in fact uh, this was a correction phase for the entire real estate industry because a lot of uh, people and the developers were doing the repeated mistakes as far as the costing as far as the uh, estimates as far as the designing and everything is concerned which is concerned to real estate so this covid actually put a full stop to all those things and made us rethink on the living spaces what we designed because uh, the mantra what this covid followed is stay home and stay safe so stay home gave us a lot of boom lot of boost to ourselves to our entire industry that we have to rethink the uh, and delivering the uh, living spaces because um, we don't know what is ahead of us today it is covid tomorrow it will be something else day after tomorrow we can have something else but the living space the home the home sweet home what every indian dreams today has to be redesigned and has to be given a comfort level wherein the people can stay in with the family in the lockdown we can have a better uh, work from home atmosphere uh, yeah, in the uh, same time we when we have our parents with us in a joint family how are the families are going to be placed the number of uh, bathrooms in a room the size of the rooms uh, the balconies the, the open spaces because 
covid time we don't often go to uh, we don't often find us going to uh, outside playing and everything uh, 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 in the playgrounds and everything so the balconies the ventilation of the house everything as far as the design aspect is concerned has put us on a, a redrawing scale and it has given us a good thought to architects to the industry to the real estate to rethink on the living spaces and this is a change what we see in the coming future that entire real estate market will witness in the coming days as far as the living is concerned as far as everybody work from home is concerned as far as the housewife who are the better half of us uh, where they used to spend a lot of time in the house we are going to give them a better living space a better comfortable space wherein they can enjoy the living and uh, the two of the panelists also said that uh, there is a lot of uh, traction uh, in the wellness segment so uh, we are also coming up with a wellness co-living space which is a uh, uh, next level of the living wherein uh, the rents can be shared with the families who are going to stay and they can use the common facilities also so in fact real estate is going has reconnected now and this will put a map of in india to the global people that a uh, buying home in india will uh, the experience what people used to have and what they'll be having now will definitely change uh, even now uh, because of this covid and all the other crises the rbi the governor the reserve bank of india the nbfc banks the nationalized banks have also given back uh, to the industry the interest rates what we have today are the all time low interest rates so anybody who is now thinking of buying a home will go in for a home without uh, thinking twice because of the uh, outgoing what they will have to pay to any real estate to buying any real estate is all time low so this is the best time wherein to buy your dream house to have your own space because stay home and stay safe is the mantra of today thank you thank you mr shrihari and yet again i guess there is something that i'm repeatedly hearing from all our leaders here our uh, friends is that yes very very important under any kind of crisis that we face that we need to keep innovating we need to keep adapting to the change so once again like mr shri hari did make a mention that they have actually gone back to rethink to in in their drawing boards that you know how living space can be a little more different in terms of with work actually coming home school coming home and yes with all the challenges they did try to figure out what the opportunity lies ahead of them thank you thank you mr shrihari thank you so much and with that let me bring in all smiling uh, madhu back into our conversation uh, so well you know madhu i need to understand from you uh, as a professional there are so many things that have now taken a bit they taken a back seat isn't it so how did you actually utilize this particular time or do you really think and you'd like to share with us speakers that you know uh, with our followers i mean and of course our speakers here that you know how do we really kind of stop thinking about at you know work somewhere has taken a back seat for uh, professionals uh, uh, from from the film industry so how important it is to not think about that and kind of you know divert all your energy into your own personal well being and and anything in particular that you started doing which you were never never you know you were only thinking about it and you would keep procrastinating it so what is that you'd like to say to all our fans and you know all your uh, wonderful friends out there you know it's a movie industry is one of the industries that's really really hit hard along with of course as you heard uh, uh, the property business and uh, you know everybody has been telling about all the industries that's really suffered and movie business is definitely one because uh, you cannot work without coming together and uh, and we work as you know whether it is television or whether it's an ott platform or movie of any kind this business requires different situation different areas different uh, <clears throat> uh what should i say it's all about collecting people in different places that's what uh, movie shooting is all about now because of this covid that's completely under halt and it's run, especially people the big actors have somehow taken this as a moment of a break or bonding time with their family or working on their bodies or you know people have discovered new passion some of them are cooking away a storm in their kitchen uh some of them were dancing away and i am one of those guilty ones dancing away on tiktok before tiktok got uh, uh banned from india 
So <coughs> we all did that. But the people who really suffered in the industry are the daily wagers. And our industry is made of more of daily wagers than the regular producers and actors, which are just few. It's the light men, the assistant directors, the fight men. It's all the, so the kind of suffering that I see, and they all keep calling me. They all say, come together. So I really must say that there are some senior actors who have come together, made it upon their priority to bring other people like us to contribute to whatever extent we can. And in the end, make, made a big kitty and donated away to uh, the makeup. There's a makeup and hairdresser union. So they were helped by some of the actors. But this cannot be an ongoing thing. Everybody cannot. It's very hard to all the time, you know, um, to help someone else when you yourself after a few months you are yourself questioning your stability and your existence so this is really a hard time um, spiritually and physically physically for people who are going through who don't have money to run their homes I don't know what is the plight and what is going on and spiritually and morally how much can someone help just because you are in a little bit better place so the balance life is a paradox it's never about white and black it's about how we merge, how much we can help and how much we preserve, how much we look after ourselves, how much to pay attention to our mental well-being and then focus on our physical well-being and then step out and help someone else maintain their well-being. So yeah, this is really a trying time, not only from you know the hardcore money aspect, even from every other question that I ask myself on a personal level, how do I make myself um, non-liability to myself First and foremost, because if I'm un unwell mentally or physically, then I become a liability on others. So first is how do I take care of myself? How do I not? Because even I, I've just started working again after my children have kind of uh, become a little bit older. I had given it up for a few years. Now I started working. In the last five years, very tentatively, I was working in small projects, keeping my family happy. Only in the last year, I have taken off with some big projects. Big projects means a lot of time involvement. Now all of that has come to a halt and I find myself completely empty, almost feeling I'm not good enough for anything because now my children don't need me. They don't need me to bathe them. They don't need me to feed them. So I don't have very much to do. So yeah, then, then it is the mind that takes over. Oh my God, what do I do? I have nowhere to go. I have nothing to do. That is a time when you start praying and giving gratitude and finding things to help yourself and then definitely helping someone else find their uh, joy um, is one, one good thing that helps my well-being. If I know that someone is happy out there because of my minute contribution, whichever way, sometimes it is not just monetary, it's even a phone call. Someone needs you to know that you care and you think about them and you worry about them. That little bit also helps people. Even that comes, that is also a generous spirit. So there are many things I've understood. And yeah, on a very personal, on a very light note, my children and I are bonding um, and we are cooking together. We are dancing together. We are exercising together. We watch a lot of Netflix together. So on my front, thanks to, uh, uh, you know, everything, we are okay. But it is definitely a very, very uh, paradoxical. It's, we, are not, we are not on a holiday. We are all together, but you know you're not on a holiday. So we are all here. The word lockdown is a menacing word. It's very overbearing. In, it's like you feel like it's a war and yet not. You feel you're safe and yet not. So it's, it's a very, very difficult time. And to each his own, everyone's trying to figure out how should I be happy. And one of the main thing is, uh, even though we are all separated from one another, connection emotional connectivity is the only way that is holding me and the people I know in a good place. To know that or anywhere else in the world, to know that you're loved and you're thought of and you're connected and thank God for internet connectivity. Uh, back in the day, we had to make those ISD calls, STD calls. Today, we just look at each other's faces and you feel connected. So you can curse the social media for isolating you but I am grateful for social media for connecting me. Yes, we are far, I think we are far more privileged than I guess when we had the world wars and so many other pandemics that actually hit the world around. Today at least we, we have 
the power we have you know this entire equipment with us to stay close to our loved ones and and uh, well i am sure all your fans simply love you as you very rightly said you're bonding with your kids you're dancing away you know like nobody is watching you you're enjoying every bit of it so i guess ladies and gentlemen it's important that you have an inward look you need to introspect a little more inside your own self in this little time wherein all this while we've been cursing about time nahi hai time nahi hai but today yes we have a little bit of time though though we are like somewhere it's a captive seeing lockdown as she said is a menacing word but still this is what the situation is we got to deal with it and we got to deal with it with a lot of optimism so thank you thank you madhu thank you so much with that let me bring in uh, Uh, Raj sir, back into the conversation. Uh, so, Mr. Malala, you know, I need to, I need to, you know, kind of put this question to you. That uh, is there any set formula, uh, sir? I need to, un- I want you to unmute yourself. That is there any set formula, a systematic way to overcome any kind of challenges that we come across life, and uh, you know, particularly when it comes to the emerging leaders, you know, for businesses that are already well. Uh, They they have reached a particular height in there. Of course, he, each business is going through a lot of uh, setback, but there are emerging leaders, and I'm sure they must have just started off, and and now they are in a lockdown in this whole captive situation. Any advice to them? That what would you say? Should they be holding on? How do they stand strong in this in this moment of you know crisis? Uh, the simple answer, Sangeeta, is. uh there is no one formula or there is no established a systematic way to address these situations to me in fact the whole world would see uh, a pre covid and post covid so from now onwards every incident and every aspect in our life we will look at from this perspective what is the pre covid what is the post covid it may not be as big as like before christ and after christ but definitely <laughs> pre covid and post covid every aspect will be looked like that now from now onwards so and uh, and by certainly feel that yes there is there is adversity around us and uh, the impact or the level of adversity is much higher than what one would have in fact anticipated in the normal circumstances but we can always turn this adversity into opportunity like neeraj ji said he is looking at post covid yes yes yaar post covid mein to kuch to chal raha hai but post covid mein main kya karu so i am actually gearing up for the post covid so that is an opportunity in fact i am not losing my heart i am actually trying to gear up myself for the post covid one thing is that we have seen many people that they are not disheartened with this particular adversity yes there are some people who are getting panicked definitely they need some help but as we move forward we can see more and more people are trying to prepare themselves for the situations maybe initially there is a panic but definitely yes maybe we are getting used to panic situation or we are gearing up ourselves and have a better strategies so what what i actually advise or suggest is that for the emerging leaders definitely have a set clear goal you have you you be clear on what what you really want to achieve whether you want to do be a innovative product or you want to lead something or you want to become rich in the life which is nothing no no wrong at all and or you want to actually engage yourself in the social service or human service whatever it is but keep your goal simple and clear so don't get actually confused what you want to do and what you want to achieve then draw a kind of a plan right to, to achieve your goal be flexible right uh, the goal is fixed then your approach should be actually flexible and your thoughts should be flexible and they should be so flexible that you should be able to change your the course of action according to the situation it cannot be rigid you need to change you need to change your the path according to the situation uh, for example some people may think uh, the current crisis yes there is there is one formula for the current crisis the whole world is experimenting and they are adapting on a kind of a experimental basis or even on a trial and error basis some some countries may say that a lockdown is the better option to get through this situation but the problem is actually somewhere else it is it is affecting the economy and some people are only just focusing on the economy but 
they might be ignoring on the human loss of human lives so all in all there is no no one solution for any of the situation no even for the adverse situation so there is no one proven formula and particularly for the pandemic situations like the current crisis so we need to look at what is my objective what is my goal and then what path basically i should be taking what is the solution so your goal will di dictate your path as well as the the flexibility that you should be having to i know actually there are several organizations individuals they are inventing new methods and they are looking at new formulas new approaches to address their specific issues the issue of one organization or one individual or one community one country may not uh, may not be the same for others so you really need to look at what is your specific circumstances and then try to develop a solution around your uh, circumstances if one solution or a solution in one circumstances may not prove to be effective in other circumstances so there is no one proven formula or proven method that someone can actually exercise uh, there are several things there are several things that we are exercising now which have not been accepted in the earlier but now it has become a new normal so when we say that actually a kind of a seminar we think of webinar now rather than a seminar right <laughs> so yeah, that has yeah. become a new normal so <laughs> earlier webinar a conducting a kind of a gathering or a technical discussions on a web was used to be a kind of a once in a moon right as no one would have actually accepted this practice but now most people might not accept the physical uh, presence in a kind of a seminar rather they would prefer a webinar wherein they are not only actually looking after their life by having uh, not only the social distancing no distancing at all in fact and then saving their uh, the resources both in terms of the time as well as the finances and it is much convenient so this has become a new normal so as i said every aspect in our life now will be looked pre covid and post covid the world has changed completely changed maybe in 3 months or 4 months time but the way we are thinking the way we are looking at the aspects or way the way we are going to live in the future has completely changed my last this thing is have positive energy right and think positively then you can turn your advice into a kind of a great opportunity never give up never give up on your ambitions or never give up on your goals keep on exercising that and keep on have a firm belief in yourself that you can achieve that wow thank you dad thank you so much and how rightly put up that yes it could be seen now as a you know post covid era for all of us so yes make sure that if you have believed in something that you started and if you still continue to believe do not give up on your dreams do not do not give up on your goals for this is a very impermanent phase of all our lives and do not allow it to do any kind of permanent damage to yourselves so true could it be in your professional life or could it be in your personal life with that let me bring neeraj into the conversation uh, smriti gupta i need to ask you of course like you mentioned earlier that uh, the entire travel industry has taken a bad hit and is very is an industry that probably will really recover the last for a matter of fact you know so so how do you think uh, of a, or let me just rephrase my question say what are what are going to be the key turning points and the key learnings from this entire covid era and how are you going to emerge out of this entire adversity and accelerate your growth now yeah in fact uh, as you as we have already a lot of have been saying this pre covid versus post covid so currently i am focusing only mainly on post covid part because we cannot do much in terms of bringing customers uh, during this transition time and it's a moving target we don't know when the vaccine will come when the situation will become normal so the question is when but what will uh, what will happen once covid is over so as i mentioned that we have planned some strategy we are we are going to focus on customers experience there won't be so many pomp and show where there is a lot of luxury rather than whole focus will be on customers experience customer will be looking for value for money he won't be saying i am going to pay 20000 for per night 30000 for per night 
even if he is paying for one thousand per night, where is value for money? So, as a travel factory, we need to find ways where customer can get better value of money. There will be lot of competition. There will be lot of chaos. But once we are able to provide value for money, and once we are able to deliver customer satisfaction, the situation will become normal. Very quickly, the business will grow between three x to five x. What was there in pre-COVID time? There will be a lot of people going for holidays. We need to focus more on their experience part. So we have already planned a lot of things that we are going to do at our resorts. One important aspect is that people, uh, many people are saying that they are losing money. People won't travel. No, rather people will go for travel, uh, traveling, because traveling is not only one aspect. When people travel, they learn a lot. They get to know so many things. They learn different culture. And through that, they will bring a lot of ideas. In fact, one famous saying is that if you take one week holiday, probably you will be able to bring your productivity productivity increase by at least two x or three x. So there will be a lot of change. So currently, we are focusing mainly on the strategy. This is a moving target. Every day we sit together, me and my co-director, who is my wife, Vinita Gupta. We daily sit together. We check our checklist. We go through it, which is valid as of now, which is not valid as of now. If you see, government was first locking and then unlocking, and suddenly you say that some states are doing again locking again. So you never know when this phase will be over. So the current action plan or the current strategy, which we must today, it may not work tomorrow. What we need to do, we need to continuously devise plans so that uh, eventually we find a solution when COVID is over. As we always say that once we find a solution of COVID, situation will be totally changed. It's not a world war where there is a lot of damage to property. There is a lot of loss to manpower. Of course, many people are dying and this is unfortunate. But in comparison to world war that had happened in the past, there was a lot of damage to property. There was a lot of damage to infrastructure. There was business interruption. As soon as COVID is over, there won't be any business interruption. Business will start immediately. And there, we need to start working together. As uh, other panelists have already said that, we need to maintain that we are highly motivated. And not only we motivated, our team members are also motivated. As once we have synergy, the time will come when we will say that there was no COVID impact. In fact, our economy will boost like anything. Microsoft has already decided to invest huge money. There are so many companies which are investing in Reliance CEO. So post-COVID, a lot of money will come to India. There will be a lot of productivity. People will focus on more productivity part, value for money. And the time will come when we will not only travel industry, but India will grow at least 2x or 3x once COVID is over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. Thank you. Yet again, a very, very positive attitude that yes, rather we will grow much, much faster if we really know how to adapt and how to re-strategize ourselves. Thank you so much. And with that, let me get Mr. Srihari into the conversation. So we have quite a few questions for you. So while somebody is really wanting to ask a lot of things, so let me just take, now I'm going to be asking a few questions that have coming from our uh, wonderful uh, uh, you know, viewers here. And some uh, Abhishek Das, he wants to understand that how can real estate and construction sector in this COVID area, in the sorry, in this COVID era, evolve by turning adversity into opportunity? And there is also, so I'm going to take it one after the other with you. So if you could just, are you there with us? Yeah. So did, you hear my, did you hear my question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah loud and clear. Please. please. Yeah. So uh, this COVID has also uh, turned a lot of uh, thinking the way developers should think. And actually, this has uh, proven to be a very uh, good uh, changeover period. And from what we used to work normally, from what we have to work, the technology adaptation, which was missing in the real estate sector, this COVID has brought in the thinking levels in such a way that we have to adapt technology and we have to go as per what is there in the market. Thanks to all the social media and all the 
other uh, channels what we have today uh, what has happened now is uh, uh, pre covid and post covid buying uh, a property uh, thing will become very easy because people now have a lot of time uh, seeing uh, being at home working from home and the uh, house owners who wants to buy the husband and wife the children can have a joint discussion can have a look at all the properties sitting at home from the home with all the 3, 3d virtuals 3d walk throughs and directly interact with the live person from our office uh which was not happening before what was happening is only the husband used to come or the head of the family used to come he used to visit this uh, property he used to start discussing with us then uh, the conversion time would be uh, too much but now the pre covid and post covid things are become very serious the buyers have become very serious because of all the things uh, whatever is there the technology aspect which was lagging in the real estate sector has come back and which has also helped them to decide upon the property as far as the living spaces are concerned because each person in the family have their own perception towards their living space like the uh, housewife wants a better cooking uh, space the husband wants a better work from home space and uh, the children want a better atmosphere they want all the amenities they have they want to have a good neighborhood and uh, since the schools are also happening from home they also want their own space so all this has uh, given us a lot of traction in fact after uh, the government announcing the 7% uh, housing loan rates the inquiries the conversion levels have gone very high uh, because a uh, lot of developers across south india had uh, ready to occupy apartments wherein uh, these were as a stock uh, on the books on us uh, as a old baggage which we were carrying now all the stocks are being uh, sold because people want to move in to their own houses their own uh, living spaces because the tradition in india is hamara ghar hamara makan hamara uh, sapna so this uh, thing what the common man of india has in his mind is now becoming uh, a greater tomorrow for the indians and for the home buying experiences so home buying now is going to completely change because uh, of the uh, technology what is was missing has come back and uh, this has lot uh, this has added a lot of traction to the industry and helped us increase our sales increase our uh, uh, post sales and pre sales and also after the people who buy the homes we can interact with them we can take their views we, we are also correcting ourselves as far as uh, after post sales are concerned what are the things which are uh, feeling discomfort in the home what has to be changed so customers give us a feedback saying that no this is not right that is not right you wanted a fridge point here we wanted a microwave point here so all that things uh, coming so in place so there is more interaction with your customer now because of technology has kind of really really seen that how it has evolved the real estate business yes and uh, as the managing director of the company before you used to not meet our customers also but now as soon as the booking is closed i tell the team i have to interact with my customer what they want in their house because that is a correction and that is what we have to give back to the society and give back them because they are investing their hard earned money what they have earned over a couple of years and this will be these are not the people who will do a business in a property or anything they are buying a home once in a lifetime to settle their dreams inside it so i we want to know what what do they want what have we got to offer what is the correction what we want to do as per their requirement and this has helped us to increase our sales and also this brings lot of confidence in the customer by being transparent to them and also uh, giving them a clarity right from the stage of booking to the handover so real estate as in uh, post covid is concerned is going to have and hit new phase new uh, heights uh, and also the uh, big 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 thing the correction in the rates which was due has happened and the rates will not go below this point this is the final and the corrected rates what we have today so i advise so everybody I'm who to interrupt here you were talking about uh, you know the price point so there is a question very quickly that i request you to answer that somebody is asking will the prices really go down now in terms of the real estate were they inflated and is it the right time to invest into property we are already touched the bottom level 
i think this is the right time the this are the right prices because after we had a lot of webinars with the industrial leader everybody told us why you to have a stock and keep keep vacant when you can sell it to the public who are in the needy and who wants to buy a house so we corrected every everybody in the industry corrected the prices and this is the rock bottom price what we are going to offer we are offering the houses at cost what we had because we the situation now is we don't want any profits or we don't want to see uh, our balance sheets increasing and the growth happening we want to offload the stock what we have and give it to the public to have their own dream house uh, to them because uh, we don't know the future whether this covid is going to continue or not whether the vaccine is going to come or not there is a traction and confusion in the market so right time good uh, it's a very right time to go in for the house because another key factor housing loan rates i am repeating housing loan rates are all time low thank you thank yeah. you mr shihari thank you so much for your very invaluable input thank you sir so yes you heard that rise there is a great price correction that has happened today the real estate is far more transparent in terms of the technology available at our fingertips and as very rightly said by neeraj uh, you know when when it comes to the travel industry where in they are trying to create an experience and i guess that is where you know we hear mr patak also equally you know saying and agreeing in that particular aspect that yes when they are trying to create an experience experience from the very touch point the buying point to you know to when the customer has uh, you know uh, bought the property or bought his or her dream house with that madhu ji we have few questions for you and i'm going to take it very very quickly before we wrap up this wonderful webinar thank you all of you for your inputs and a couple of things madhu ji somebody uh janet okay janet is here and janet says that you know there are individuals who are into depression right now because they're not able to see opportunities ahead what advice would you give to them i mean it i mean said and done but we know that there are people who are still dealing with a lot of i mean and we've also heard the who say that the next pandemic is actually going to be mental health so said and done talking about happiness talking about turning you know adversity into opportunity but somewhere there is a lot out there who is totally totally baffled with this whole lockdown who is not used to being under captive so what advice will you give them to to all of those who are really dealing with stress at this point in time ma'am could you just unmute yourself yeah can you hear me hello hi can no, you hear me if i start thinking you're going to yes i can hear you ma'am sorry for that okay no i'm very very sympathetic and empathize with this current uh, mental illness and the focus on it because for the longest time um you know i am raised in the 70s uh, so back in the day our parents never gave us the importance if we fought with a friend or if we had a fight uh, any situation that happened our parents also would give us two slaps and say don't overreact don't do drama watch tv homework kar le so ja so you know i had somehow carried that forward saying thinking that uh, the mental depression that we are talking about is very of a very high level it's like a clinical depression and the most of us of the depression that we talk about i i have tend to believe that you know we are over uh, exaggerating our emotion little bit of despair little bit of despondency and uh, you know so we are calling it depression so i please ask forgiveness if i come across insensitive because i'm trying to educate myself i couldn't understand when uh, somebody like super successful like dipika padukone in a career wise um, and then she's declared the most beautiful woman and she had uh, you know all the eligible bachelors of uh, you know at her feet and then when she declared one fine day that she went through depression that is when i tried to focus on it because i when i look at a person like her i couldn't imagine what reason she has to be depressed about she has the world at her feet what is she then i studied a little bit and i understood that depression is not cannot be talked casually like uh, you know i cannot casually put it down like i tell my children when she comes running crying to me i said go run on the treadmill beta you'll feel uh, happy she got very offended my daughter when i told her she said mama i'm coming to tell you that i've got a problem and you're telling me go for a walk you'll feel happy because what i was trying to do is make light of the situation 
I feel that if you go in a, for a walk in an open area, you exercise and you get your endorphins uh, into uh, play, I feel that chemical, uh, the minute, minor chemical imbalance that is making you feel, weighing you down, will get dispersed. This is what I thought. But now I, I, I can understand, I cannot talk like that because it is really a pandemic now. The more and more people are unable to deal with the uh, problem. There are a lot of reasons because a reason I think is social media because today the whole world is in your fingertips. When I was a movie actor back in the day, there were no uh, Instagram and Facebook. So I never knew what movie some other actor is doing. I didn't know the movie that I did not get, somebody else has got it. Or I didn't know many, I didn't know who has what, who has bought a house, who has bought a car, who has got a new movie. And because you didn't know all that, you were able to see the benefit of your life. Today, you have to become extremely strong to handle social media. But what has happened is we emotionally have become more fragile and we are unable to take the information given to us. We are unable to process. We are, that is why I said that every life is given to us and that is the unknown factor that I keep talking about. It is God. I call it God. You call it what may. He has decided that you are going to get so many movies in your career. You are going to head this company and you are going to be a carpenter. You are going to own this car and this man is going to drive your car. He is your driver and you are the owner. Now these are things that we have not decided. It has been given to us. We have to make the best of it. It is the thought. And one thing to add is that our uh, parents have to make us strong. And today making people strong has also become a challenge because they have become the human fabric has become extremely sensitive. So we cannot be dealt. Today I can't deal with my children the way my parents dealt with me. They gave me one slap and they said, go and sleep. Today if I say something like that, my children will call the, um, uh, the government and say that my parents are abusing me. So you see the whole, whole, the way we look at things have changed. I think we need more understanding. We need more people to come together. Today we are becoming more and more isolated. We are becoming nuclear families. When mother is going through, a, going through her menopause, she herself is emotionally and hormonally, chemically compromised. And how can she deal with a teenage daughter who is also emotionally and hormonally uh, compromised? And now we don't have aunties and uncles and grandmothers who can come and substitute. So we have become more and more alone. And we are all dealing with each other's problems, not knowing how to deal with your own problem. So we need to practice coming together. Please create more and more relationships, not Facebook relationships, but talk to each other, sit with each other. Love and loneliness is a big disease. So love is the only thing that can cure loneliness. We need to come together and social media, like I said, has connected me to many people, but that is also the reason why we are so disconnected. So we have to handle, this cannot be handled in one talk. People have to come together. We need professional helpers. There are more and more today. At our times, we never went to a counselor. We thought if we went to a counselor, we are mad. We are loony, lunatic. Today, we need counselors, we need professionals because our mothers and our grandmothers are unable to deal with our situation because they don't understand. My daughter tells me I don't understand her because I'm still a 70s child. So the children who are born after 2000 and the children who are born in the 70s and before 70s, we are different. Mentally, we are different. The era has changed. The human aspect has changed. So when you cannot handle with something, there is no harm in asking for help. There is no harm for a mother to go to a counselor and say, please help my child because I am unable to understand her. There is no harm in doing that. All I can say is, it is time now to, more and more, because we become internet dependent, it is more the requirement of the day to get hum, human beings together, humanity together, emotions together, and not and become a little bit more personal and intimate in life and maybe then we can see and recognize somebody else if he's going through something there is no shame in vulnerability there is only help and strength in vulnerability if i tell you i'm feeling this today there is no shame because you will give me your support and i may be uh, i may become better in my life because of that Wow, like always, Madhuji, so beautifully you put it all up so, so wonderfully that yes, it's just about okay to be vulnerable. It's just about okay to not be okay at times, but make sure that you're creating more, more deeper bonds. And more and more, we learn, 
sorry yes. excuse me more and more we hear people from my industry are uh, doing you know what depression leads you to do recently we've heard many such situation it is only because you are not able to see yourself as successful a boy who has come from patna and has won awards and is doing so many movies how why was he so depressed why was he not able to handle a few short falls the basic thing is two things we must all endeavor to live a full life if you live a 100 years life by average agar utne saal hum ji lete hain to believe me sare experiences life ke aate chale jayenge but just live do whatever you have to to live don't hurt yourself don't don't hurt yourself that is god's prerogative thank you madhu absolutely so rightly put up again that yes in your average lifetime you are bound to go through all your shortfalls you are bound to be that sometime it's going to weigh you down but it is okay make sure that you keep up your fighting spirit thank you thank you go out and talk right and that's how you can actually turn any adversity into into your own opportunity the way you like it and with that my last and final words so uh, shri hari so uh, you know couple of things for your fans as we conclude this great webinar how do you feel and what is that you would like to tell our viewers in just two lines just two lines i would like to conclude is this is the right time uh, don't treat this pandemic as a adversity or a negativity take it in a positive way uh, because this has shown us in the way a uh, good ray of uh, hope and way of uh, life and this has also changed the perception uh, thinking towards how the life would be without all the things going out and sitting in a house or sitting in a four walls and uh, now we have realized that yes there is a life within ourselves and we have to progress towards it so be positive stay uh, stay safe and stay at home wow i i love when you say that though we are here in four walls but we realize there is so much to life and that is we ourselves to our own lives that's amazing with that yes na, mr malela uh, how do we as we conclude there was a question and somebody said you know that the that the world bank has been talking about gloomy future of india Uh, but you know we've seen uh, google we've seen microsoft investing into it so does that kind of uh, makes uh, the statement of w of world bank futile uh, no i don't think so uh, world bank is actually by uh, estimating or predicting based on their own uh, theories and then whereas google and then microsoft have been investing in india and then other economies uh, based on their own opportunities so i don't think so that they both of them are wrong or either of them are wrong so it all depends on how you look at it and then what you are in fact trying to project or what you are trying to measure so world bank may be looking at the overall economy of the country whereas google and microsoft are looking at their own opportunities under the adversity so both of them are right uh, what i would uh, say is as a final concluding thing is be positive don't be uh, distressed right you are not alone in this battle all of us are with you and then you are with us so we will we will together sail through this situation and then if this pandemic goes some other may come the difficulties may come there is there is no end of end to the challenges and then difficulties it's only the level of challenge right and then unfortunately this pandemic is quite severe and then it has been extending quite quite uh, while now but be positive never give up Stay optimistic. Uh, Mr. Nidhi Gupta, yes. Last and final words from you, sir. Our biggest glory is not in never falling, but rising every time we fall. This is an opportunity for us. We cannot do anything. We are not responsible for bringing COVID, but we can use each and every minute to re-strategize, to develop our skill, re-develop a skill. and become victorious once this covid is over thank you thank you so much so with that ladies and gentlemen our wonderful friends and followers hope you've enjoyed this great session wherein we deliberated and discussed and of course shared some great experiences with all of you in our endeavor to actually help you to evolve from good to great in our endeavor to make you a little more empowered to turn every adversity into opportunity Yes, and somebody did ask that you know when uh, uh, Madhu spoke about the four things: uh, attitude, attitude, health, and soul set. That was from the book Five AM Club of Robin Sharma. One of our followers was asking for it, so that's from the Five AM Club. 
So ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Make sure that you keep innovating. Make sure you're talking to people. Make sure that you have the sense of gratitude. Keep thanking. Count on your blessings. Never ever give up. And yes, the time to invest into property is now as Patak sir said. With that, this is your host Sangeeta Singh signing off. A big thank you from the Asia One family to all our panelists. Thank you so much for enriching the webinar for us. Thank you, Maluji. Thank you, Raji. Thank you, Neeraji. Thank you, Shrihari. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Today, thank you all of you for joining us.